We're in Reserve, St. John the Baptist Parish, Louisiana. Behind me is the Fifth Ward Elementary School, and to my left is the Environmental Protection Agency Air Monitoring Location, which is known as the Fifth Ward Elementary School. This monitoring location, as well as five others, completely surround the industry of interest, which is known as DINKA elastometers. DINKA takes chemicals and manufactures chloroprene, and from the chloroprene, they make neoprene, which is a synthetic rubber. In 2016, the National Air Toxics Assessment reclassified chloroprene as a likely carcinogen and established an appropriate ambient air standard as 0.2 micrograms per meter cube. Over the years, the highest concentration at the Fifth Ward Elementary School in 2016 was 66, which was 332 times the acceptable level. In 17, it was 151, which is more than 700 times the acceptable level. Then DINKA was required to put on control technologies, which did reduce their chloroprene air emissions considerably, but they were still over the acceptable level. And as a result of all of this testing, DEQ stopped their testing of once every three days and once every six days for 24 hours and changed it to a continuous monitor that shows a peak. And when a peak occurs, they do a canister sample, which I'll show you the canisters in just a moment, over a 24 hour sample. So as a result of that, the concentrations are still at this location, way over 0.2 as well as the other five monitoring locations around the Dinka facility. We have petitioned over and over again to have this school, the Fifth Ward Elementary School, relocated because they are being exposed to excess emissions of chloroprene. And the health department came in and did a study and said there were no other less toxic areas in all of St. John the Baptist Parish to move this school. So they have left those children here to suffer. And not only the children, but the staff and the principal and the teachers. And if you came out here during recess and you saw those little ones running around in the playground and breathing really, really deeply that chloroprene in the air, you'd realize this was not the appropriate location for an elementary school. It's run off of a solar panel and has a continuous monitor for volatile organic compounds. And when a peak occurs in the ambient air of the volatile organic compounds, it triggers one of these stainless steel balls, which are known as SUMA canisters. And once it's triggered, it collects air over 24 hours and then shuts off. And that is then removed and tested for concentrations of chloroprene in the air. If during that 24 hour period, there's another peak in the continuous monitor, another canister will be triggered and it will also be collecting. And then as you see here, there are three canisters. After the second one triggers, the contractor is notified to come out and add additional canisters so that if there continues to be peaks in that short period of time, there are enough canisters. Every time there's a peak, it collects an air sample for 24 hours. It's focused on chloroprene. The issue is a lot of community members want to know what are the other compounds. There are something like 67 other toxic chemicals that are being released by this facility. However, the chloroprene is the most toxic. And so when the community is asking for additional ones, we will come out in the field when it's a really calm day where the emissions are sitting down or a foggy day and collect a canister and have a TO15 analysis done for all the chemicals. So we then can determine which of those chemicals are being released by the DINKA facility. In this case, these six air monitors that surround the DINKA facility 
are critical for the community to understand what chemicals are being released in the air and how much of those chemicals are being released and how high it is over the acceptable level in the ambient air. This data is published on the Department of Environmental Quality Electronic Data Management System, so it's easily accessible. And in the early years, in the 16 and 17 and 18, I did workshops every two weeks to bring them new information that was available and had been posted on the electronic data management system. <music>